a recent Canadian government evaluation has upended expectations Sweden's Saab Gripen E fighter jet has outscored the long-favored American F-35 Lightning II in a major review of Canada's future fighter needs. The news has ignited fierce debate, pitting industrial promises against strategic flexibility and allied uniformity. The evaluation, commissioned by Prime Minister Mark Carney's government, was meant to be routine, but its findings were anything but. The Gripen excelled in operational cost and industrial benefits, moving from underdog to serious contender to replace Canada's aging CF-18 Hornets. The F-35, long presumed as the successor, now faces a real challenge as officials confront the dilemma of choosing between fifth-generation stealth and a more affordable, adaptable domestically produced alternative. The shock is giving way to intense deliberation as the government weighs its next move. Canada's F-35 journey has been long and contentious, with the country investing heavily in the Joint Strike Fighter program since 1997. The formal agreement to purchase 88 F-35A jets was meant to anchor RKF modernization, but only 16 are legally committed so far. Political and economic shifts including a new government and rising U.S. trade tensions prompted a review of the remaining 72 jets. The F-35's high operational costs, over $33,000 per flight hour, sparked questions about affordability and sustainability. The government's review confirmed concerns about the financial burden and strategic risks, validating the decision to pause and reconsider. Now, the F-35's promise is weighed against fiscal prudence, industrial strategy, and national sovereignty, leaving the fate of the remaining jets uncertain. The F-35 and Gripen E represent two very different visions for the future of air combat. The F-35 is a stealthy, data-fusing marvel designed to dominate the skies with its advanced sensors, low observability, and seamless integration with allied forces. It's a jet built for the digital battlefield, where information and stealth are as important as speed and firepower. But this cutting-edge technology comes with staggering costs, not just in terms of purchase price, but also in maintenance, upgrades and the specialized infrastructure required to keep it flying. For many countries the F-35's price tag is a major consideration. The Gripen E, on the other hand, may not match the F-35's stealth, but it's celebrated for its agility, efficiency, and affordability. It's designed for nations that need a versatile fighter, one that can operate from short or even improvised runways, in harsh climates, and with limited support infrastructure. For air forces, seeking flexibility and lower operational costs, the Gripen E is a compelling choice. Saab claims the Gripen can be flown for as little as $7,500 per hour, a fraction of the F-35's operating cost. This means more flight hours for pilots, more frequent training, and higher fleet availability, crucial factors for maintaining readiness and skill. The F-35 program already involves over 30 Canadian firms, supporting high-tech jobs, and integrating Canada into a global supply chain. This partnership brings economic benefits, but also ties Canada's defense industry closely to U.S. priorities and export controls. In contrast, the Gripen proposal offers to build the jets in Canada in partnership with Bombardier. This would foster a sovereign aerospace ecosystem, giving Canada greater control over its fighter fleet, technology, and future upgrades, while also creating skilled jobs at home. The choice then, is between cutting-edge stealth and deep interoperability with the US and NATO, or operational sustainability, flexibility, and a stronger domestic industry. Each path offers distinct advantages and trade-offs. The F-35 bets on technological edge and alliance integration. The Gripen prioritizes cost-effectiveness, independence, and national capability. Both jets are world-class, but they serve different strategic visions. For Canada, this is more than a procurement. It's a decision between two strategic futures, each shaping the nation's defense, industry, and international partnerships for decades to come. The debate is no longer theoretical. Both options are now on the table, and the choice will define Canada's air power for a generation. Saab's most compelling offer isn't just the Gripen jet itself, but a bold vision to manufacture these advanced fighters right here in Canada through a strategic partnership with Bombardier, this proposal would see state-of-the-art jets rolling off Canadian assembly lines marking a significant shift in the country's aerospace landscape and bringing high-tech production to Canadian soil for the first time in decades. This plan goes far beyond simple assembly. 
Saab is offering a deep transfer of technology, training Canadian engineers and technicians, and establishing a true joint venture. The result would be a sovereign, homegrown production capability, giving Canada full control over the manufacturing, maintenance, and future upgrades of its fighter fleet. With global demand for modern fighter jets on the rise and a potential massive order from Ukraine on the horizon, a Canadian production facility could transform Canada into a major export hub. This would open new markets, strengthen trade ties, and position Canada as a leader in advanced aerospace manufacturing. Recognizing the scale of this opportunity, Canadian government officials, including industry minister Melanie Jolie, have shown strong interest. Their recent visit to Saab's headquarters in Sweden signals a serious commitment to exploring the proposal and understanding its potential benefits for Canada. Establishing a Canadian Gripen production line would create thousands of high-skilled, well-paying jobs across the country. It would also spark the growth of a robust domestic supply chain, supporting Canadian companies that provide everything from precision components to ongoing maintenance and upgrades. This vision would transform the fighter jet procurement from a simple military purchase into a far-reaching nation-building economic strategy, with long-term benefits for Canadian industry, innovation, and global competitiveness. The potential impact on Canada's aerospace sector is immense, promising to revitalize the industry, foster innovation, and secure Canada's place in the global aerospace market for generations to come. As policymakers weigh this unprecedented industrial opportunity, the decision could shape not just Canada's defense, but its economic future and technological leadership on the world stage. Saab and Bombardier already collaborate on the globalized surveillance aircraft, proving their ability to merge expertise. Saab Canada's president has confirmed ongoing talks to deepen this relationship, envisioning a true aerospace hub in Canada. For Bombardier, building Gripens would revitalize the company and anchor its future, especially in Quebec. Critics note that Brazil's Embraer, a Bombardier rival, is a Gripen co-developer, complicating the industrial benefits calculation. Still, the allure of a made-in-Canada fighter jet thousands of jobs, advanced technology, and sovereign capability, is powerful. For a government focused on jobs and industrial strategy, the Gripen proposal is more than a military option, it's a catalyst for national renewal. The F-35's main selling point is seamless interoperability with the US and NATO, simplifying logistics and battlefield communication. U.S. officials warn that operating both F-35s and Gripens would be expensive and complex, potentially straining NORAD and NATO integration. The Gripen, however, is fully NATO-compatible, with Sweden now a NATO member and Gripens participating in alliance missions. Countries like Hungary and the Czech Republic have integrated Gripens into NATO without issue. The debate is whether Canada needs the F-35's premium integration or if the Gripen's proven compatibility is sufficient. The F-35 offers the deepest integration. The Gripen provides adequate interoperability at lower cost. Canada must decide if the F-35's advanced networking is essential or if the Gripen's advantages outweigh the difference. The choice will shape Canada's role in Allied operations for decades. The F-35 is the fighter jet of choice for the United States and its wealthiest allies, who prioritize having the most advanced technology and seamless integration with U.S. military systems. These countries see the F-35 as a symbol of their commitment to collective defense, and as a way to maintain a technological edge over potential adversaries. The jet's stealth, sensor fusion, and networked capabilities make it a cornerstone of modern air power for NATO and close U.S. partners. In contrast, the Saab Gripen is selected by nations that value sovereignty, cost-effectiveness, and the ability to operate independently. These countries often seek to avoid over-reliance on any single superpower, and the Gripen offers them a fighter that is both affordable and highly capable. Countries like Sweden, Brazil, and Hungary have chosen the Gripen for its operational flexibility, allowing them to tailor their air forces to their own needs and budgets, rather than following the path set by larger alliances. For Sweden, the Gripen is more than just a fighter jet, it's a tool for national self-reliance and a way to maintain an independent defense policy in a complex world. For Brazil, the Gripen program brought not only a modern aircraft, but also valuable technology transfer, local industry growth, and new opportunities for Brazilian engineers and workers. 
The ongoing war in Ukraine has further highlighted the Gripen's ruggedness and ability to operate from improvised or damaged airstrips, an essential quality in modern conflict zones. Ukrainian pilots have praised the Gripen's adaptability, noting its capacity to take off and land on damaged runways, roads, or even highways, giving it a unique edge in unpredictable environments. The Gripen is also renowned for its ease of maintenance, allowing for quick repairs and high sortie rates, even with limited resources or infrastructure. Now, Canada faces a pivotal decision. Should it follow its traditional allies and invest in the F-35, or chart a more independent course by prioritizing industrial sovereignty and flexibility with the Gripen? Choosing the Gripen could mean more opportunities for Canadian industry, greater control over technology, and a pragmatic approach to defense spending. On the other hand, the F-35 is the safe, conventional choice, offering deep integration with allies and access to the world's most advanced fighter network. Opting for the Gripen would signal a bold shift toward independence and a uniquely Canadian approach to defense. The choice Canada makes will shape its global role, alliances and defense industry for decades to come. This decision isn't just about jets, it's about the next 50 years of Canadian security, industry, and international influence. The world is watching closely to see which path Canada will choose and what that choice will mean for the future of air power and alliances. One floated solution is a mixed fleet keeping 16 F-35s and filling the rest of the requirement with Gripens. This promises high-end stealth for select missions and affordable Gripens for daily duties, plus industrial benefits. But experts warn that operating two fleets creates immense logistical and financial challenges, duplicated supply chains, maintenance and training. The complexity could negate the Gripens' cost savings and stretch RCF resources thin. Politically, a mixed fleet could satisfy both U.S. commitments and domestic job creation. The government must weigh if the benefits of flexibility and industry outweigh the enduring costs and risks of duplication. It's a high-stakes gamble that could yield a versatile air force, or two underfunded fleets. Canada stands at a crossroads, facing a decision that will define its military, industry, and alliances for decades. The unexpected evaluation results have shattered the F-35's inevitability, forcing a real debate. The choice is between two visions, doubling down on the F-35 for allied integration and top-tier tech, or pivoting to the Gripen for sovereignty, affordability, and domestic industry. Each path has trade-offs, cost, capability, and international relationships. As of November 22, I... 25, the decision is pending, with the government balancing military, economic, and fiscal imperatives. Whether Canada chooses the F-35, the Gripen, or a mixed fleet, the outcome will signal its priorities to the world. The nation, and its allies, are watching closely.